50 years ago, Christopher Hogwood founded his Academy of Ancient Music to do something radical, to unearth hidden treasures, to revive the music of forgotten composers, and to explore how historically informed practices could transform the performance of Baroque and classical music. I first got to know about the Academy of Ancient Music when I was a teenager. I was very interested in music, playing the organ and the double bass, and fascinated by this new world of historically informed performance, as we've come to call it. The sound of the orchestra, the vision, was what appealed to me. Christopher Hogwood, with his inimitable knowledge of performance practice, stripped away a lot of the 19th century performance practices that were going on, which had just been taken for granted as though that is how the music had to be. He was such a born educator. He was always looking to help people find their best ways to perform things without imposing somehow. I think what I, what I love is, is actually looking at the archival photos how easy it is to date things based on what everyone is wearing. Um, the, the photo that is maybe most evocative of this is the upper strings section on, we think the Messiah recording all stood outside wearing sort of floral prints and bell bottoms, smoking cigarettes out in front of St. Jude's Hampstead. My greatest luck probably was to end up as the second soprano on the Messiah and it was so exciting because I was singing pieces that sopranos often don't normally sing. It just had a, a very special feeling. Hearing the recording was just revelatory. The instruments shone, the choir sounded fantastic, but my overriding memory is Emma Kirkby singing But Who May Abide, the moment where refiner's fire comes and the, the way that she matched the instrumental colour with that vim and vigour and also zeal. It was bursting off the page and I was hooked. Refiner's Fire to me, I, I first heard sung by um, Scholl, I think, so I think of this as a countertenor piece. So hearing Emma's recording was instantly attention grabbing because it definitely is not sung by a countertenor but I also think it's it's in a, a higher pitch because it's in a version for a soprano which just raises the stakes of the whole thing and gives it a kind of electric energy and then of course the the clarity and sort of intention of her singing is just thrilling from beginning to end and then from there I was I mean the Academy became a really big part of my of my schedule I have my dream job. I'm so lucky and honoured to be music director of the Academy of Ancient Music. And in this anniversary year, to celebrate with my phenomenal colleagues feels like such a privilege. What does it mean to me to be chief executive for this 50th anniversary season? and hopefully not just this 50th anniversary season. <laughs> it's a big responsibility. A lot of people have been involved in this journey, whether it's been performers in the early days, the different music directors we've worked with, the different uh, recording engineers, techs, theater managers, agents, and then of course the audiences, millions upon millions of people all over the world have been a part of this journey since 1973. 50 years ago, Christopher Hogwood and the Academy of Ancient Music achieved the seemingly impossible. They re-evaluated works that had been in the canon for many years. In, in 50 years, AM has changed the world. It's changed the classical music world uh, for certain. Um, we are not the only historically informed uh, orchestra to have success. Uh, we weren't the very first. Um, but I think AM has had the single greatest impact on how the world collectively thinks about Baroque and early classical music, how audiences today expect to hear that music. So yeah, I'd say it, it, AM's changed the world, really. And so naturally, we look ahead to the next 50 years. 
We have so much more that we want to share with you and we very much hope that you'll join us into the next 50 years. The next 50 years, in a cynical way, look a lot like the last 50 years, which is to say they look like nothing that any of us have ever seen or heard before. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, I, for one, am hugely excited to see what happens. Well, all I can say now is wish the Academy a wonderful further 50 years.